Hello folks, welcome back to the Age of Asparagus. Over the next two videos, we'll be adding a weapon selector to our heads up display. In this video, we'll add the controls for it and get those controls working. And in the next video, we'll integrate it with our pickup system. I didn't originally plan to have this feature, but thanks to a comment in a previous video by Static Theme, I figured it could be fun to try. Let's open our game scene here and we'll go down to our heads up display and zoom in a bit here we want our weapon selector to go in here so let's add some structure here for that we're gonna add a V box container and we can put our two grid containers in there and between the two grids we're gonna add an item list node so this is gonna allow us to add a selectable list of items uh, with appropriate signals and stuff and we can add icons it's not particularly customizable but it'll work for what we want to do I'm gonna put it up here between the two grids let's call it weapon selector and we want this to fill out between the two so in the inspector under size flags we're gonna click expand now it hasn't filled this out yet because the VBox itself is only this wide so we'll go up to the layout and we'll go left wide and there we go we can see the weapon selector has filled out that area so to start we'll add some items manually to this item list node so you have an idea of kind of how it works and then we'll add the weapons in a script so we have, with the weapon selector selected we will go up here in the top you can see this items button and allows us to add items to the list so let's start by adding a pistol and we need an icon here we can't drop icons you have to go and you can load them so we're gonna need some icons so if you go down into the video description you'll find a link to this weapons icon zip file which you can download and then once you've extracted it you can select the five icons for our five different weapon styles and then in our file system let's go to weapons there we go weapon weapons We'll go into guns, right click guns and we'll create a new folder called icons. And then you can drag these into the icons folder. You should see that little flash of Godot importing them. And now you can see the pistol showed up here and actually it has the correct font, the font we want because our heads up display, you remember we created a theme for it using this font. So all the children of the, our heads up display node We'll use it so that's great uh, if I click items again it'll show our pistol and now this time we can go load up the pistol icon weapons guns icons there's the pistol there it is uh, now you can see the item list isn't wide enough here so let's go into the weapon selector and in the rect we'll set the minimum width which is the X value here let's set that to 200 and that should expand it out. That should be able to contain enough. We'll have to see our longer weapon names and we might have to go update that again. Now let's try adding a second item for the shotgun. So we'll add that. This will be the shotgun. And load up that shotgun image. There it is. Okay, you can see our first problem here. Uh, the icons that I've created <laughs> are all sorts of sizes and different aspect ratios and everything. So thankfully the item list node up at the top here has an icon section and you can set the icon size. So let's use 64 by 64 pixels and there we go. Now it'll just force them here and it maintains their aspect ratio so nothing gets stretched. That's great. Uh, you can see that the actual position of this one didn't move. Um, we don't have to worry about that. That'll fix itself. Uh, you can put them on the top there you can see we're going to keep them on the left and there's some other options here as well. One thing I'd like to do is remove this gray background. So if we scroll down to custom styles here and then under the BG one, the background, let's choose a new style box empty. And let's take a look what that looks like. Oh, we have an error because we moved our two containers here into a V box. So all our level, wave, health and ammo values uh, are no longer findable. So we should add that VBox container there to the beginning of each of these variables. Is that right? 
think that's right. Let's see if it works. Yep. Okay. And so now here you see there's the pistol, there's the shotgun. They don't do anything yet. That's good. Uh, one problem is the up and down arrows also change the selection in the list there. So let's go fix that. So again on the weapon selector, let's go in the inspector. Got a lot of this stuff open here. Let's close up some of this stuff. We should be able to find focus. There we go. Focus on the control. And we can select the mode to none. And while we're here, why don't we change the mouse to, instead of the default arrow, let's change it to a pointing hand. So now we get a pointer and we can select it manually and the up and arrow, down arrows don't adjust that. One other styling piece I want to change is I want to add a little margin between these two and we can do that in the VBox container. If you go to custom constants and create a separation here, you probably want a separation of about 70 pixels. And I found that our six different weapons can fit here nicely, evenly between the two grid containers at the top and bottom. Okay, so this works now. Uh, <laughs> doesn't work. It just looks okay. That's what we want. Um, but let's add that with a script now that you have an idea. It's going to have a, some text and it's going to have an icon and we're just going to do that in a script. So in our weapon selector, let's create a new script. I don't want to save it here. We'll save it in the HUD and I'll create a new folder called Weapon Selector. Not sure how much we're going to need in here. Might just be the script actually. And to start, let's export an array of packed scenes. And this is going to be their starting weapons. At least that's what it'll start as. And we'll, let's call it Weapon Inventory for now. And then in the inspector, if we click the weapon selector, we can see an array here. So let's just add two. Uh, we'll add the pistol and we'll add the shotgun. Okay, uh, one problem is the icons aren't connected to the weapons at all. So let's go add that. We'll go into our generic gun, go into the script here and at the top, just underneath where we have our gun name variable, let's export a texture, we'll call it icon, and then in the gun here we can see we have a spot to drop an icon. So if I go to the pistol, for example, and click on the gun, I can then go up to the pistol icon and drop it in. So I'll skip through and do the rest of these. Weapons, uh, next up 50 cal. And we can go back into the weapon selector script. Now remember, we did add the pistol and the shotgun, so we can use those as a test. And let's go also delete these two that we added manually. So I can select one here, delete, delete. It's now empty. And if I play, it's got nothing over there. Let's add them in our weapon selector script. So in the ready method here, we can loop through all the weapon inventory. So for weapon scene in weapon inventory, we'll use the item lists add item method. Um, but actually I want to pull this out into a different function. So instead of doing that here, I'm just gonna call an add weapon method and pass it a, the weapon scene. So here we can create our add weapon method. It's going to accept a weapon scene. Pack scene. And we'll have to instance the weapon to get the name and the icon. Oops, weapon equals weapon scene dot instance. And then once we have that, we can call the item list. We can call its method add item. And as you might expect, there are two parameters, just like when we added them manually. So we'll have to get the weapons gun name. Oops. And just to make sure, let's 
give this a type hint of gun that way. I think it was there. Gun name also, and then weapon. Oops. Dot icon. Yeah. Okay. So when the weapon selector node hits its ready method, it should load up those two we left in the inventory. It should look like just like it did before. There we go. Cool. So now we actually want to equip that weapon when it is selected. And we can do that in the weapon selector. We can go to its signals here and we can choose item selected and we can send that signal. Now there's a couple here. Item activated, I believe is when it says they're activated via double clicking or pressing enter. So if it's selected and then you hit enter or you double click it. But for us, we just need item selected. That signal is going to be good. And we'll connect that to our self right here, the weapon selector. It's going to pass us an index, which is the index of the item that was selected. So let's equip the weapon here somehow. So first we're going to have to go get the weapon scene. And we can do that from our weapon inventory. And they're both zero, in, zero indexed, so that should work fine. But now we want to tell the player to equip the weapon. And probably the best way to do this is to emit a signal. So let's do that. We're, let's create a new signal up here. Let's call it uh, weapon selected. This could be item selected, I guess. It wouldn't be that hard to expand beyond things that are not weapons as well, as long as they had an icon and a name, right? So emit signal. Hopefully our, let's try that again. There we go. Weapon selected. And we do want to pass it the weapon scene. Now in the weapon selector here, the node, we have our weapon selected signal. Let's connect that. You know, if this was a bigger game, we'd probably want to connect it to some controller, maybe the game script itself to pass down to the player, but let's just send it to the player directly. Our game's small enough that we can handle that. And then we just want to, this is going to be some sort of packed scene, an item. We know it's a weapon, but it could also be an item if you wanted to do a little more work here. And then really we just want to call that method, right? Because we want to instance the scene. Then if it's a gun, we're going to equip it just like it happens here. So it might make sense to put this in a method and then call that method. So I'm going to cut that out and we'll just say equip item. And then we'll pass it the item scene. So maybe we'll do it up here above all our signals. Quick item. And then paste that code here. So it instances it. And then if it's an item, do that. Then we can handle. Uh, or you could have some additional logic there if it's something else. And then we'll do the same thing when the weapon selector was selected. I think that'll work. Let's try it. Okay, I'm gonna hit play here. Uh, I got a 50 cal because that's what we decided to start with. <laughs> I don't remember why I did that. Pistol. Hey, we got a pistol. Shotgun. It works. Pistol. Nice. Okay, so now we need a way to switch weapons without having to go over here and click. That's not very helpful. So in our weapon selector script, let's add the input method underscore input, which has the event parameter sent to it. And we'll check if event is action pressed. Is, is there we go, is action pressed. And currently primary action, uh, I guess we kind of want secondary action here. So let's go create one in the project settings input map. We'll create a secondary action. And let's add right click, left button, right button for all devices. Now, <laughs> it might actually make more sense, I realized when I was doing this. Uh, make, it would make more sense to set right click to your weapon reloading 
and then maybe have a key to switch weapons. Um, we can change that later. We'll add a key anyway. We'll add the, currently we have R for reload, so we'll add E beside it for equipping or cycling through the equipment. Okay, so now if I redo that, it should find out our secondary action. Please. There we go. Secondary action. Okay, we've right clicked or we've hit the E key. We want to know which item was selected. We can do that. We'll go, uh, we'll call this the new index. So this is the new item, the index of the item that was selected. And we're going to use a method on this item list called get selected item. There it is, uh, selected items. Now, it's going to return an array of multiple values, but if you remember in the weapon selector, in the item list nodes inspector here, uh, right here select mode we have single so it's only ever going to return an array of a single item but it still seems to return an array if you had multiple selection available uh, for example you could go and hold uh, I think hold shift yeah there you go if you wanted to add some logic for that but we're just going to use single mode which means we can just always get the zeroth the first I guess element and so that's the current one but the new one is going to be the next index we will just go up one. Now we're gonna have to make sure we don't go off the end. So we'll go, we'll just make sure the new index is greater than or equal to, and then we'll get the item count. So as long as you don't go over the item count, we're good. Uh, but if we do, which will happen here, then we'll set the new index to zero. So we're basically just going back to the start of the list. Okay, so we know what the new index we want is. So we'll call the item lists. It has a method called select. There we go. And we can just pass it a number, the index, the new one we want. And after we do that, um, that's actually just going to select it in the list, but that doesn't actually send out the signal when you select it this way. So we're going to have to manually call that signal, which we can just do uh, on weapon item selected. And we'll pass it again, the new index. That's important to note here that that's not going to trigger the signal that we were using before when the mouse clicked it. So let's see if that works. Okay, so I'm going to hit E and I get an error. Why do I get an error? Oh, <laughs> uh, nothing's actually selected right at the beginning. There's no initial selection. Uh, so there are no selected items. <laughs> at the beginning. So what we should do is in our ready method here is we'll select an item. So we can go, let's do the select method and we'll just select item zero. Now we'll have to make sure there is at least one item in our weapon inventory here. Uh, I think that's fine. We'll just make it the weapon that the player starts with the pistol. I'm not gonna connect that logic. We'll just do it manually. We'll make sure they're the same. Okay, this time, okay, so here I've got the 50 cal, but if I hit E, switches to the shotgun, E to the pistol, E to the shotgun, E to the pistol. Now it started with the 50 cal, but it, the selector thought it was the pistol, that's fine, as long as we actually change that starting weapon. Maybe we'll do that now. So the player's gun controller, starting weapon is the 50 cal. Let's switch that over to the pistol, just so they match. Here we go, and this time I'm gonna right click. Definitely make more sense for that to be reload, maybe, instead of just continuing to shoot. I don't know. 